Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. We are continuing to take a look around the NFC South as we previewed the Atlanta Falcons on Monday and who they were looking for in their upcoming draft. We're going to take a look at the Carolina Panthers today with former Saints quarterback, longtime Carolina Panthers quarterback, Jake DeLome. DeLome is on the radio broadcasts for the Panthers. He is he is very much involved with that franchise as well as the rest of the NFL. He is still a fan. He still loves watching the game and has some great insight into the Panthers, their upcoming draft, and the quarterbacks in this upcoming draft in general. Jake joins John DeShazer and myself now. Jake, thank you for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast, spending a little time Talking about the Panthers and their upcoming draft, what we can expect from them. How are you with, let's see, eight days leading up to the draft now? Well, it's a lot different than last year. Um, last year, there was a big party at Bank of America Stadium having the first overall pick. And I was able to host the party with Anish Sharaf and uh, it, all the excitement around the draft and the number one pick and um, the assumption that it would be Bryce Young, but no one really and truly knew. And so... It's a lot different this year without having a first-round pick in Carolina. But um, I think there's more of a um, – I kind of like where the offseason has gone. And I think we understand the whole Brian Burns situation that, that you know, didn't look good at the beginning. But what Dan has done, some of the guys he's brought in, and I'm very anxious to see how this draft plays out. We don't have a ton of picks. Um, and we start with the 33rd. So who's going to be left on the board on Thursday night? And does a team want to jump up and offer us a pick or two, um, you know, for down the line? That That's what is going to play out. You know, that, that's how it's going to shape up. It has to be that way, it seems. Yeah, you mentioned that you don't have a lot of picks. I think you only have three of your own picks left that right. you had from this draft. Others acquired via trades. Seven overall. Not going to get into any action until the second round with 33 and 39. Well, what areas do you think the team is going to target? Listen, you'd have to think they would want to get a young receiver. Um, this sounds like it's a very receiver rich draft. Um, and there'll be some that will fall. That's just uh, the way it will go. But you would assume there will be um, a receiver would be taken. I'm assuming there'd be a cornerback taken at some point, whether or not, I'm, I'm a big believer you always address the offensive line at some point. You never know when you're going to find that hidden gem. Um, then again, a, a, another young linebacker, another uh, edge rusher. Um, there's a lot of holes. Listen, when you win two games, there's a lot of holes on this roster. Uh, very simple. And so I think Dan is going to truly, and I, and I truly believe this, I, I think there's some leeway here. I, I really and truly feel that way. I think there's some leeway Dan is going to build this in, in, in what he believes a Panther team should be. And I think by watching some of the guys that he signed in the offseason, and Dan said it on his press conference, he wanted some dogs. And, and I know what he means by that, by being an ex-teammate. Dan loved football and loved everything about it. And his life was dedicated to football. And I'm not saying we had a bunch of guys that didn't feel that way. It's different nowadays. These kids are a lot different with the social media aspect. But there's still a ton of players out there that just love football, and it's football is all they think about. And I think Dan's going to try to target as many of those players as he can. J.D., I think it's funny that Jake immediately threw out that he's always a fan of drafting an offensive lineman as a former quarterback. <laughs> you have to. You have to, right? I mean, listen, this game is one in the trenches. I don't care what anybody says. I truly believe we – Patrick Mahomes, I'm sorry. He's not human. I think he's a unicorn. And – where did he struggle the most ever against Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl because his offensive line was decimated? He didn't have both starting tackles. Uh, the yardage that he ran laterally that game was, was astronomical. And that's that's you have to be good up front. Tom Brady, the, the undefeated Patriots, who Michael Strahan, OCU Manora, Justin Tuck up front. I truly believe up front's the way to go. 
Yeah, Jake, how important is it to get the infrastructure right around a young quarterback? Because young quarterbacks, especially ones who have been sacked a decent amount of times, can maybe get a little gun shy or whatever, but you, you have to have the proper infrastructure around them to allow them to develop. No, I totally agree. And, you know, John, I, I think going into last season, it felt like we were going to have some some blocking for Bryce, to be quite honest. And then the first game of the season, you lose your starting left guard, Brady Christensen. Austin Corbett was going to be coming back uh, from the ACL that he suffered the last game of the 2022 season in the Superdome. He came back and ended up having a meniscus, I believe, on the other knee. And it was, I think it was 15 different combinations at guard that the Panthers started. It wasn't healthy. Um, and going from Bradley Bozeman struggled in a way is that with Steve Wilkes and that bunch, we ran more of a power downhill running type of uh, run, uh, type of run game. And with Frank, we kind of went more zone. And that wasn't the most conducive to Bradley, who's more of a bigger guy and can lean on you. So we had some issues. And I don't think there's any questions about Bryce's toughness. I believe he was sacked 62 times last year. And I can't tell you how many that he got out of sack-wise. And um, I just think the, the last thing you want is for a confidence for, for a young kid to be shaken. And I, I think maybe there were times that, Certainly, I know my confidence would have been shaken because you're dropping back, you're getting hit. That's that's human nature. So signing the two big guards in free agency uh, looks like moving Corbett to center. Um, I, I like what we're doing there, and I think we'll protect Bryce a whole lot more um, than last year and kind of get him going in that direction. And uh, Dave Canales did not know him whatsoever. But love what he did in Tampa last year. And this is before we ever played them because we didn't play them, meaning the Panthers, till December. It was mm -hmm. December and January. But just what he did with those guys, Mike Evans, we get it. But God, when there was a struggle at first, but Trey Palmer, the kid from LSU via Nebraska, you know, a, a rookie find, and some of the other guys, he did a really good job and, and did what Baker really did well. And I truly believe Bryce right now is extremely accurate. Um, extremely quick feet can get his hips flipped and kind of get the ball out fast and hopefully we can do some things that kind of more the middle of the type feel type of situation and then start to develop an, an outer outside passing game because we didn't have a ton last year Adam Thielen was by far our number one wide receiver you know I was about to lean into that um obviously you know we're talking about the draft but you know a new coaching staff and having some stability, hopefully in that position for Carolina, uh, except for when they play the saints, but having some stability, some stability in that area, how much does that help the young quarterback? Because, you know, he went through a lot of changes last year in, in that regard. It, it, it's going to help him tremendously. And I give him a lot of credit because, you know, every week he'd get up and he'd say, look, I have to play better. I have to do this. I mean, he, I learned this a long time ago from a veteran quarterback, and it was always you swallow the sword no matter what. You take the blame for everything. And I always felt that's, that's just the way to do it. You, you earn the respect of your teammates. Um, and the way this kid worked, the hits that he took, and he just – every week he battled, he battled, he battled. And so um, the expectations, I'm assuming, are very low uh, around the NFL in regards to Carolina. Last year, I'm not so certain. I thought we had high expectations – with a rookie quarterback, new staff, I thought, you know, six, seven wins could have been the mark. Did not think it would, it would go the way that it did with only two wins. Uh, but I'm quietly optimistic on what we've done offseason-wise, the pieces that we've added, what Canales is going to bring. And then I'm hopeful the draft. It, we, we've got to hit. We've got to hit on some guys. It's very simple. You go back to uh, Jeff Ireland and the Saints. Uh, what was it? The Ramchak, uh, Ryan Ramchak, um, uh, Kamara. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's that was that was a home run, uh, you know. And if you can get that, yes, we don't have a first round pick, but can we hit on some of those guys? There's been a lot of guys that I played with that weren't first round picks that were great players. The so Chris Jenkins was a second round, Will Witherspoon third round, Steve Smith third round. You just think of those guys that that had such an impact. Ricky Manning Jr. in our Super Bowl run uh, was a third round pick. So if we can hit on some of those guys to kind of add to what we already have. You never know what can happen. You have a quarterback plan. Um, he'll have a lot more confidence this year because, and I told him this at the end of last year, buddy, like it's not going to get any worse. It's not. <laughs> it just, you're waiting for the season to end because it just feels like it's just, it, it's this marathon. Um, but I think he grew so much 
Um, and I think you'll see a much better version there. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm op- very optimistic this year. To be very honest, I can't really say I was that that way last year. Now, Jake, I'm going to ask you to put on Dan Morgan's hat. You, you be the GM. Who who would be the first guy you would take, or the first position, I guess, you would take in the draft? You know, John, I'll be very honest. Um, I, I would go wide receiver slash corner nickel somewhere around there. I, I just, I think those are two areas um, that we could use some. Um, as a quarterback, I love receivers. Uh, don't get me wrong, um, but I, I'll, I'd like to see us to get another weapon. I'm not so sure tight end wise in this draft. Certainly, we know Brock Bowers is the one and only, so to speak. But he'll he'll be gone way before we'll pick. I would love to see us trade back. To be honest, uh, if we're at 33, I'd love to see someone get aggressive and they have someone highly rated on their board because we have the 39th pick. And if we could get you know, just trade back a little bit if our board looks that way and, and gain another pick, be it a second next year, uh, a third or fourth this year, just to kind of add. We need pieces. I don't think we're just a, a, you know, I don't think we're just this year away. I mean, we're, we're going to need pieces to build. Now, Jake, I think we all think about the draft conventionally, you know, one through seven rounds. How important, though, is it to, to, to mine some of that talent and the undrafted rookies? rookie class we've seen the saints do it you know year after year after year and, and a lot of nfl teams are able to do it that way to kind of supplement the draft listen i was that guy you know i was an undrafted guy whether yeah. or not they can they can have an immediate impact this year we'll see i i don't know if I'm, I'm dating myself here but if you remember sammy knight with the saints yes yes was undrafted out of yeah. usc their captain mr everything but everybody thought oh he didn't run well well, he was a football player, and he was a safety, and the ball found him. So if you can find those guys, and I'm telling you, that's what Dan's going to look for. You're hearing a lot of talk of it's not an overly deep draft. You hear, like, you know, the first four rounds, quality players, and there's a big fall off. So I'm anxious to see if there's going to be a ton of jockeying of teams trying to get into the third and fourth round to get some guys. or um, th- That's what I'm anxious to see, how this draft plays out. Um, everybody and their mother has a, a mock draft. And so it's uh, I, obviously I don't pay much attention to it because we don't pick in the first round. So <laughs> who knows what's going to happen on uh, Thursday night so um, or next week. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but just hopefully we can get guys that, that love football. And I'll go back to that. I just think there's something about you can be good at football and like it. But when you're good at football and you love it, that's a dangerous combination. That's a healthy combination. And, I, and I, that's a Dan Morgan trait. I, I promise you that's a Dan Morgan trait that he looks for. Well, even though you said you haven't been looking at any mock drafts, everyone that I saw has a wide receiver or cornerback in sure. that second round for the Panthers. So you're right on the money there with it, just the needs and how you think it's going to go. We've talked a lot of offense. Defensively, there's only five returners from the starting 11 on that side of the ball. Added a lot of experience, though, in free agency. How do you feel about just that overall side of the of the game? Well, I look at it, yeah. Listen, the Brian Burns deal. You know, whatever happened contractually and, and how that all played out. Because Brian was a good guy. I like Brian a lot, and hopefully it works out for the best. But De- getting Derek Brown re-signed, I thought, was, was huge. That was big. Uh, Ashawn uh, Robinson getting him. Josie Jewell. Shaq Thompson is a big one to me. You know, Shaq broke his ankle in the Saints game. That was week two last year. Um, You know, in 2022, I thought Shaq started the season out slow. He was coming off a knee injury. And then as the season progressed, I just, you watched him get faster. So I was excited to watch him play. And he was playing extremely well week one going into week two. uh, When he broke, so you have a guy who's really, he's just in his eighth year. I mean, he's still fairly young. Getting him and Josie Jewell. Um, Clowney's another one that I, I loved what he said, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but he talked about coming back home to, to the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. And he said, I never wanted to come back earlier in my career. I wasn't ready yet. And I thought that was very telling. He said, I'm ready now. He said, I'm, I, I'm ready to come back now. Uh, he said, because I have to play well every week. Because if not, my family, everybody's going to tell me I'm not playing well. I thought that was a very mature, and, and hopefully he can stay healthy and he can bring those dynamic plays and, um, 
and J.C. Horn. J.C., I think, is a dynamic player. He's got to stay healthy for us. And uh, we signed Cook from Buffalo, who I love. Just somebody that loves football. And Dan was in Buffalo, I think, when they drafted him. So there are some pieces uh, that we need. And that's why I'll go back to, do we trade out of 33? Or do we take somebody at 33 and then at 39, do we move back and, and gain a couple? So I think as many players as we can get, um, that would certainly be be welcoming, you know. Um, but Evero, glad he stayed. That was a huge get for us that he stayed. Um, and and I, listen, those big, mean, nasty guys that are near the line of scrimmage, I hate them on defense, but I love when they're on my team. <laughs> I played with what, those guys. I played with the Julius Peppers, the Chris Jenkins, the Mike Ruckers. I know what those guys do to op opposing offenses. <laughs> You mentioned Clowney and what he said about coming back home. It kind of reminds me of what Tyron Matthew said, you know, earlier in his career, he said that he wasn't ready to be back in that environment. So hopefully it pans out well for him uh, as in Clowney on his return to the Carolinas, but just overall kind of your draft strategy, as far as being a, a quarterback do you think that a team should draft a quarterback every single year, regardless of where they're sitting? Um, selfishly, yes, because I like the quarterback position and I'm so jealous. I've wanted to be drafted my whole life. <laughs> I'd always try to bribe the equipment managers uh, every year. I'd, I'd give them a note card, Jake DeLone, Southwestern Louisiana. <laughs> just, just draft me in the seventh. You know, I, I always wanted that. Um, you know, I, I think you can always take a flyer on a quarterback. I, I shouldn't say a flyer, but, you know, you have to trust your board. And I'll go back to this. Everybody thinks they're a GM, right? All players and things like that. But I'll never forget when we drafted Ryan Khalil, the multiple all-pro center, all, you know, pro bowler, phenomenal player. He was the two-time All-American at USC. He was, you know, considered a little undersized. We signed a center in free agency that year to a $27 million deal. And this is, gosh, I think 2006, if I'm not mistaken. Really, really good money, especially back then. Well, Ryan Khalil is sitting on the board in the late 50s, I believe, if my memory serves correct. And I remember watching the draft, and that's all the Kuipers would talk about. He's still sitting there. He's still sitting there. And there's no way Carolina would take him. They signed Justin Hartwick to a big deal, and we took him. And I thought that was brilliant on Marty Herney's part. He trusted his board. Ryan was rated so high and he was there and we took him and it worked out. I mean, it was the right decision. And so I just think you have to, one, you have to get your right guys in that doing the scouting and there's got to be tough questions and you have to trust your staff. I mean, look at Baltimore. Look what Ozzie Newsom has done for all those years. He never, it's like he never panics from getting good football players that, that show up and they don't panic. And it's going from Newsom to Acosta. They, um, Eric, Eric DaCosta, the, the GM there now. I mean, that's kind of thing. I know if I would run a drive, that's my philosophy. You always want to protect the big people. I want the big people up front. But trust your board and um, never shy away from the tape. While the Panthers don't have a top pick, there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that go obviously very early in this draft. What's your assessment of the quarterbacks in this draft and, and how many do you think are going to go in the first round? Man, um, let's go back to last year real quick. I think it was pretty, it was easy to say Bryce. And I thought CJ played well in college. And, and I remember doing videos last year. The CJ Stroud I saw play against Georgia in the semifinal game was different than any person I had seen because he kind of ran and moved around. And I remember having a lot of talks. I'm like, I wish I could see one more game. I wish I could see him do that again um, because it was there, but you didn't see it a ton where Bryce, you know, Bryce really was fantastic in college. Now this year, Caleb Williams is a special talent. I mean, this guy, it, it's natural the way he can throw a football. It really is natural. But watching Jaden Daniels week in and week out, especially because he's right down the road in Baton Rouge, he made SEC defenses look slow. That doesn't happen. He The way in his progression from one year to the next, very Joe Burrow-ish. I remember talking to Mr. Jimmy Burrow, Joe's dad, going into his senior year. He called me that summer. Joe was like a fourth-round pick, projection-wise. And we talked about agents because he was getting contacted by some agents and and then next thing you know, he's the first overall pick, and it's a no-brainer. And then Jaden Daniels, I don't know where his draft stock was going into this year, mid-round, you would assume. 
Mm-hmm. And then he had this year. So, you know, this guy's a he's special. The Drake May kid. I'm not so sure they were too talented around him this year. I'll be very honest. I think he's a talented player. Um, but nowadays with these rookie contracts, um, you can roll the dice and grab, draft these quarterbacks because you don't really and truly get crippled, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. Um, way back when, when the Matthew Staffords, and I want to say Sam Bradford was the last one of the the, mm-hmm. the old contracts, he got $50 million to sign. That was, that, that's insane. Nowadays, these co- contracts are not even worth that in totality over four and five years. So you can kind of, I don't want to say get away with it. So I think that's why you're seeing so many teams taking those shots of, of drafting the quarterbacks. The Penix kid, like what's wrong with him? I know there's injury concerns, but like how accurate he was. And yes, he had some really good receivers that he threw to, but so did C.J. Stroud. It hadn't affected him. So we can look at it in so many different ways, you know, um, I, I'm glad we have Bryce, you know, to be quite honest. Um, I, I truly think there's there's still a ton of potential there and, and get some pieces to help him and uh, and see what we can do. It, it would be nice to be able to have a quarterback on a rookie contract. I think everybody, that's that's the, the ideal way if you can get one and load up your team and try to make a run. You know, Jake, you mentioned Dan would be looking for, for guys who are dogs and, and you like – playing with guys who are dogs how do you find that guy how do you how, how do you identify that guy is it you know what you see on film I mean it's got to be a little bit more than that but you know I would imagine you know when you're t- sitting down talking to a person they can kind of tell you whatever it is they feel like you want to hear yeah John I think it's the film I think I know for me if ever I'd be in this situation I'm going to look at what's the worst game that this you have played or where your team is getting whipped you know and there's always going to be that that game somewhere and I'm putting in that tape, and I'm watching. And that was something that John Fox, when he first went to Carolina, um, it was 2002, and, and, and they were a 1-15 team. And he put in the last four games of the season, and he focused on those games when nothing to play for. The U-Haul is packed. Uh, George Seaford was fired. Everybody knew. I mean, it was over. Mm-hmm. And those guys that he saw that it didn't matter, they didn't quit, those were the bases. That was the nucleus of our Super Bowl run. And in 2002, they won seven games. And certainly getting Julius Peppers and, and drafting those guys, Jordan Groves the next year. Um, and we, we we added some pieces in the free agent class with Stephen Davis, myself, Ricky Pro, uh, and younger players starting to ascend. But that's what he that's what he looked at. And I'm a big believer in that. That 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 film doesn't lie, man. And when you can watch the film when it's tough, when it's difficult. When you're not having your best game, um, those are the things I, I think you got to watch those film, and, and that that truly tells you about the football character uh, of a player. Are you one of those people that sit down and watch the entire draft, start to finish, all three days? I do watch the first, definitely. Second and third, the majority. Honestly, usually that's a Saturday, and it depends if the kids have something or whatever. Uh, but. If I'm home, I have it on yeah. because I, I really and truly, I, I still have that dream of one day my name would have been uh, been called, to be quite honest. I'll never forget Elijah Mitchell, the running back for the 49ers. He went to UL, and he was a six-round pick. And I remember watching it in my living room um, whenever it popped up at the bottom. And I was so excited, you know, because he's such a great kid. And I knew he was a good player. But to get in that system, it's the right fit. And, it was the, and, and, and it's proven uh, that he's been a very good player for them. Uh, so, you know, I, if I can, I'm watching it. I love it. Have you ever been a, a guest, an announcer or picker? No, I haven't. I haven't um, uh, been a guest uh, picker. Um, uh, the only thing I've done basically hosting um, draft wise last year when we hosted the big party in the stadium yeah. and then the COVID year, um, because that was ghost town everywhere. We did a live. Um, that's when we drafted Derek Brown, but myself, uh, Jordan Gross, uh, Jonathan Stewart. And we had all the like Panther people connected from Steph Curry to Luke Combs and different people would hop on and Matt Rule would hop on and we'd have the players. And that was a fun night, you know, because we were, everyone was looking to do something. So that, that was, that was a, you know, enjoyable night. And I think we made the right pick in Derek Brown that evening. Yeah. Well, maybe that can be your ticket to the draft. You can announce somebody else. Yeah. You never know. But- <laughs> They better not give me my card. I might say my name. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but I, I do enjoy that. I think the NFL does a great job. I love that it's going around in different cities. I think that's awesome. 
Uh, there's so many, you know, NFL fans and I just think it's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending some time talking to us. Always a pleasure. Love your insight. All right. and your where, where, are the, where are the Saints draft? <laughs> what are they doing? What's what's the uh, general consensus in New Orleans? Let's go. I'm going to put you guys on the spot. Yeah. Um, I would say the general consensus would be that the Saints would be looking at an offensive lineman. Okay. <laughs> And maybe several because um, there's a lot of question marks at, at offensive uh, offensive tackle right now, uh, both right. tackles. And so, um, yeah, I, I would imagine that they would be somewhere they're looking. But the Saints always trust their board. Now they always go, you know, they do the, you know, as they as you said, like Marty Herney did with with Ryan Khalil. They they go for the best available guy who's in their bubble. Um, Personally, I hope that a tackle is in that bubble because, you know, there's there's question marks there that have to be answered and and, and big question marks. And if you want to protect your quarterback, as you said, you got to have you got to you got to start there. It's right. got to begin up front. And I think, you know, just my personal opinion, uh, if, it, if it's not an offensive tackle, it's got to be somebody that really blows them out of the water. I think I that I think that the best available and a tackle will kind of coincide at the same time for us because there is a lot of of good depth at that position and in, in this draft so hopefully the stars align and then that's what happens <laughs> sounds good well we'll know uh we'll know in what 10 days we'll have an idea of where everybody's at and we'll get the draft grades and who's going to be bust and yeah it's always fun <laughs> love it love it yes love it. exactly we'll know then in that moment who's going to win the nfc south <laughs> Thank you so much, Jake. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thanks, Jake. Really appreciate the time from Jake. He is always so much fun to talk to. I'm glad that the Saints were able to help him fulfill his NFL dreams, even though they signed him as an undrafted free agent and he actually didn't get to hear his name called on draft day. It's funny that he still thinks about that as often as he does. As far as this upcoming draft and what the Saints will be doing, we are all counting down the days, eight days until the draft kicks off next Thursday. And on Saturday, day three of the draft, we will be at Manning's hosting a watch party 12 to three. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of Saints alum legends are going to be there. We're going to have giveaways, games. So make sure you put it in your calendars that you're coming out to the Saints draft party. We'll keep you updated throughout the week and next as we continue to count down to the NFL draft on Friday. We will have a preview of the Tampa Bay Bucks. So make sure you tune in then. Thanks for listening today. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.